Hi, boys and girls, it's me. I'm standing inside my dining room, and if you hear any motor noise behind you, that's my air conditioner going because it's still uh, deathly hot. And I just brought Berwin inside, and he was uh, air frying a robin in the birdbath. What you hate to see here is this lovely kind of Art Deco glass see-through cabinet. Is my my up-to-date 2022 collection of transistors. So I figured I'd take a moment and just share you where my uh, transistor collection is right now. Now what you see is basically the vintage stuff. Now I have some newer things, and you know, like I have stuff by Sam Jean and other things, and it's kind of new. And you know, you could go anywhere and buy this stuff on Amazon or whatever. But this is the stuff that that's kind of cool and special to me. So uh, let me just walk you through it and show you what's going on. Okay, let's start with the, uh, the top shelf stuff. And I've got four allies. I've got the hard to find pink and equally as hard to find tan. And then the other two allies are the black and the white. Now the black and the white are the A transistor 500D or later ones. Uh, these are the little bit earlier ones. I think these are the, they call the B versions. Um, the very, very first early ones were the hand-wired radios, and I don't have any hand-wired, but one distinctive way to find out if you had a hand-wired Xenon, if they, if they had the correct knobs, like these knobs up here, okay, like this is the volume and this is the tuning, they would have actually a molded straight line going through it on either knob. And that's one giveaway if it's a hand-wired. I mean, otherwise you'd probably have to take the covers off the back. And uh, another thing, too, is the A transistor, where you could usually find uh, differently between an A transistor and a 7 transistor, is um, usually here. Now, this one on the black is worn away, but it has the words etched in here long distance here on the D and also on here. That's one way you could tell if it's an A transistor version. Okay, so uh, let's see, these are 58, 59, this is probably 56, 57, no, I don't know, maybe maybe 57, I don't know the year for sure of the hand wires, I think they came out in late 55, early 56, so. Um, in the middle here are probably uh, early, six, early to mid 60s, these are the Deluxe Royal 500s. And they made them in three colors. They made them in black, uh, two-tone gray, and white. I absolutely love these radios. They they have a a uh, oval Jensen speaker in it, and uh, I always wanted to have one of each color. I used to have actually a red Allies, but then I had given it to uh, an elderly lady that was looking for a uh, easy to use transistor radio. That uh, it's it's a long story, but. Uh, I gave it to her and she recently passed away, I understand, but she was a real sweetheart of a lady. So now if you look on the top here, the gray one, the two-tone gray, the foil isn't that great up here, but back behind here, I have to kind of fish it out. There we are. So those are the reproduction labels that actually go up on top of that one, but this one is replacing that yet, so uh, that's going to happen in the near future. Okay, next shelf down is the second gen GE Super Radio. Just a simple AM FM radio. And this is really a nice, nice player. I was listening to this. I had this next to the bed the other night. And I had it down real low so I didn't wake up Berwin or Mrs. RW. And look at this thing. It's got separate bass and treble controls. The, the second gen actually had a separate kind of like a woofer mid-range and a tweeter so it actually this actually has a crossover network on it and it sounds really really nice and uh, you can still find these around they're getting harder and harder to find but uh, I really like the these radios a lot the first generation just had one single speaker behind it behind this grill work here and then the third generation, they had spin-offs that were made by both General Electric and RCA. Um, not as great as this. Um, they're slug-tuned instead of a bread slicer, but it's a decent radio, but it's not as good as the first and second gen. Okay, the next shelf down 
There's only one radio here, like the second shelf, and this is my Zenith Royal 2000. Now this was supposedly, from what I could find on, on, the, on the web, the world's first transistor AM FM portable radio. And this piece that I have here is near mint. And I went through it, I recapped it completely. There was probably somewhere, I don't know, 10 or 11 small electrolyte caps. Uh, aligned it. Um, and I found on eBay auction a couple years ago, probably about five, six years ago, that's the original owner's manual. And also, here's the another, another uh, piece that went along with a little booklet. AM, FM, portable radio, cordless, tubeless. And then over here was Zenith's little... They used to give this one away with a lot of different radios, but it explained FM and how FM worked. And um, there was a lot of people that bought these things and never had an FM radio before, so it explains how nice they sound and everything. So, uh, love, love this radio a lot. Um, got a couple other little goofy things here. This is a can of Coca Cola that's full, and also it's a pull tab. But also, if you turn the can around a little bit, then the secret is now coming out. Everything you see there is in Kana, which is Japanese. So this is actually a Japanese Coke can I brought back from Japan. It's 250 milliliters instead of a 12 ounce. I brought that back from Japan when I was living. I lived in Japan for a month in 1991. So I was able to smuggle it in. Um, this I did a video on a long time ago. This is a Thomas, and, Thomas A. Edison oil bottle, which was basically the oil that they used to top off the batteries that Thomas says and sold. So it's got nice, nicely molded inscription in there. Uh, so I'll just leave this guy here. Uh, in the back is his bottle of empty bottle of what was once red wine called Radio Boca. Um, the bottle is kind of unique. The wine was kind of crappy, but you know the Radio Boca part was just you know that's screaming cool. So let's just drink a bunch of wine and listen to the radio. And if you remember back a couple years ago during the pandemic, the uh, DVHRC club during Cutstown were giving away. These hand sanitizers, which I thought was kind of cool, so I put that in my case as well. So that's that's the third shelf down. Next, okay, next shelf down. Now we're getting down to some uh, some neat radios here. Uh, I'm going to start from the left here. This is a Zenith. I don't recall the model number of the, any of these radios, so forgive me. Um, oh, this is a Royal 650. Okay. Now, there's nothing that spectacular about this radio, uh, but they're uber rare. And the reason why they're rare is, is that the whole case, the whole outside casing of the radio, is made from leather. Um, this was made in 62, I think, or 61, but it's a survivor. And it's only a six transistor, but for a six transistor radio, this thing sounds magnificent. I'm not going to turn it on, I don't want to get smacked by the uh, YouTube police on it, but you're going to have to trust me and take my word for it. And I would spin this around and open it up, but I don't want to flex that back cover anymore, and I have to because the leather is so old and so dried up, it's going to go away. But I really love this radio, even though it's a six transistor, like I said, but it's a really good player, and it's not too bad as far as DXing uh, uh, stations, too. So the next one over... Another radio that I really, really like. Now, this kind of looks familiar. This is an Arvin 10 transistor. I don't remember the model number. Uh, it's from 1963. And uh, there's some really neat features on this radio. One is, is it's over here, it's got, the, well, you see here on the panel, there's three switches. There's a radio on, off, uh, a, a tone switch. And then the third one over is actually a little dial light. And it lights up that dial. Isn't that nice? And it's got the original light in there. Uh, also, what's neat about this is 
Um, it's got an RF station. I did a video on this a couple years ago, so some of you may actually remember me showing this radio to you. But um, I recapped it and uh, did an alignment on it. This radio has an RF stage. So this thing is a a DX machine in, in the winter months. It's really, really good radio. Uh, you don't see the tra 10 transistor version of this too often. Uh, you see a lot more 8s and 9s. Um, there's a 9 transistor version of this radio. It's just about identical. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned it. I think this radio is from 1963. So, and then last but not least, I think most of you probably know what this radio is. This is Zenith Royal 755. Um, this is also a magnificent radio. It's, uh, they made three flavors of this. Um, when I say there's different models, they had a, uh, a regular one that looked like this. This is another version that actually had this little battery saver switch, which uh, actually just drops the voltage down a little bit, but the radio still works fine. And there's a, another, a third version that actually had a rotating handle on top, rather than like this one has a ro uh, regular leather, leather handle. It had a rotating handle on it. And uh, both, you know, the Arvin and the Zenith are really good DX radios. Um, this Zenith and then this rare leather one belonged to a late friend of mine. His name was Charles, and Charles was a, uh, a radio engineer and uh, just a really good guy and a really smart guy and he taught me a few things he actually went to the uh, to the RCA Institute and uh, uh, I'm, I'm really I'm gonna really miss the guy but I, I'll I he actually taught me uh, one uh, thing that I'll, I'll maybe I'll make a video on that sometime and show you what uh, what that is so uh, anyway let me get to the bomb shelf okay last but not least the bomb shelf is showing two transoceanics. All right. Now I'm going to start on here with the one on the left. The one on the left is a, uh, a 7000. I think that was the model number was R7000. This was the last uh, American-made 3000 series. Of course, they made the uh, the other one that I believe was made in the Philippines. And uh, I got this from the same gentleman. I bought the uh, my Variac power supply from. This was his personal radio, and uh, when I when I bought it from him, I brought it home, and everything worked, including the le the, the weather band. I never have taken this radio apart, and it, it's it probably could use you know some tune up and everything, but it works just fine for me, and and uh, I I really like this radio. There's a few little scratches and stuff in it but uh, it's it's a really a good solid performer and then last but not least over here on the right this radio is uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to say my cold dead hands radio I'm not parting with this I bought this from uh, a friend I'll just won't use his real name who's a Zenith collector he's a you know he's like me he likes the Zenith stuff and when he showed me this radio, we were at a ham fest, and he showed me this radio, and uh, this R1000. Uh, this was the first transistor transoceanic, and uh, of course you know the story. When these were being first come out to the market and were being made, uh, they also made the tube version. And if you see here, it's in his clear uh, plastic wrapper. And that was an actual option that you could buy from Zenith to protect the radio. And there's not a flaw or scratch in this radio. It works perfectly. It works on all the bands. The indicator is perfect on all the bands. Um, I won't tell you what I paid for it, but it was a very reasonable purchase. And uh, I absolutely love it. So there you go. This is my... Uh, my back up here to get it all in. So that's my uh, 2022 uh, radio collection. So I hope everybody uh, enjoyed that. So, oh, and one last, let me just uh, show everybody one last thing, just as a little reminder. And I just want to remind everybody that on the 16th and 17th, that's the 2022 Kutztown Full Swap Meet. 
Okay, now it has in the uh, parentheses tentative, but right now those are the fixed in real dates. Okay, they give you a dose of Kutztown right there. They this, this, these pictures were taken uh, by a very, very good uh, guy and uh, does a wonderful job in putting these, uh, helping to put these calendars together. So, 16th and 17th. Today I'm, I'm doing, this is the, the 26th of Friday, that's when I'm filming this. So, okay, and also uh, if you need any more information beyond that, go to dvhrc.com, not .org, dvhrc.com for more information, and uh, hopefully we'll see you there. So I hope you enjoyed the video.